Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so we're here to uh, deliver uh, DSA's open letter to Greg Marlis, the executive director of the shelter, the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless. They provide a much needed service to the Boulder community for housing people in, well not housing, but providing shelter for people who desperately need it. Um, the homeless population continues to grow as Boulder continues to get gentrified and people get priced out of housing. Um, the shelter has a number of actually very dangerous policies that have resulted in one death already prior. Uh, Benjamin Harvey, who froze to death on Christmas Day last year for the crime of tapping on a window when he was a few minutes late for the shelter's arbitrary uh, mail collection window. Um, he was banned for a year and then froze to death on the park bench. Um, and there's no way for shelter residents to get any sort of justice from the shelter. It's a private nonprofit, and it's a private nonprofit. And even though the city demanded that they have binding arbitration, the shelter said no, and the city council kind of folded. So they have mediation, but that just means both parties, the shelter and the resident, if there's any issue like someone getting kicked out for bullshit reason, which happens all the time, they have no, there's no way for them to seek justice, excuse me, to seek justice. Um, so our first demand is that we need binding arbitration for the shelter. Also, we need uh, all current suspensions reevaluated in every person uh, every resident who has been sent to the shelter through coordinated entry, which is their sort of high priority um, funnel to services, be readmitted immediately. It's it's really cold. I can't. I wouldn't be able to sleep out here. Um, and third, we need people who have experienced homelessness either presently or in the past on the board of directors. The people that are living here should have a say in how it's run. Um, so we are going to have some speakers. Uh, talk about these issues and then we're going to go and deliver a nice letter that's been signed by like 280 people and a number of orgs around northern Colorado and we're going to go try to deliver it to Greg Harms. Right. Yeah. Who is in here? Where's my uh, air horn? In the left. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd it go? Does anyone else want to sign? Oh, it's over here. Yeah. yeah. I, think, um, I think the best light is basically where these guys are standing. We should have um, Can they kick us out from the door? Should we just read it there? We're gonna, we're gonna, oh yeah, so we're gonna read here and then go over there and deliver our song. Uh, okay. Darren, Darren suggests that. that. Sounds good. Oh wait, let's get an order here. So, um, <laughs> should we start with the talks? Yeah, yeah. I'm wait, but do we have all our, uh, Eric, who's like a really good filmer, is gonna, is supposed to be on his way. We're not totally sure if he is, but. Okay. In the meantime, can you answer a question? Yeah, absolutely. What do you expect from Greg Harms? What would you like him to do? Uh, we would like him to read our letter, acknowledge the issues with the shelter, and agree to seriously agree and consider um, enacting our demands. Ideally, I mean, we need these changes to happen. Um, we would hope that Greg Harms being a good person, being someone who cares for the homeless, would take this very seriously. And, um, yeah. Have you had communication with him before? We have. We, we notified him that we were coming. He sort of said, oh, I won't be there. You know, I won't be, I won't be there that night. Uh, we can arrange a meeting at another time. So we're still here. He should, if he really cares about this issue, you know, he should show up. Um, we hear that he doesn't, he's not here a lot. Um, so I think he should work more, and uh, but we will meet with him as well when that works for him. I can't this phone. Can you make sure you're you're in the light? Yeah. Yep. Hey. Hey. The true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable 
members. While we're doing most of it, and then only walk on their property to deliver so letters to the camp. Practices that have led to people losing their lives in Boulder. A whole year has gone by since Benjamin Harvey's totally preventable death, and in spite of many recommendations made by our city council, made by community members, this, the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless and Executive Director Greg Harms have done nothing. So we are here tonight to demand that these changes be made. Yeah. yeah, what do you guys think of doing it on the sidewalk? Darren says that's public property and we can do it. It actually is. And we just found out that uh, the uh, one of the was it city council members like basically called the cops on some people that were living behind the Walmart on a diagonal plaza and they just started doing sweeps of that area. It's just disgusting that the impulse to punish someone to kick them out if they're living on the streets like it's like that's something they want to do is disgusting. The impulse should be to help to say oh we're doing something wrong. We're not providing housing. We're not providing shelter. Right. Like no one, no one, no one wants to live in a fucking parking lot, and nor should they. I just checked, and apparently it's 31 degrees. Um, so the I guess the emergency shelter thankfully is open tonight. But if it was just one or two degrees warmer than this, which is extremely cold, there would not be an emergency severe weather shelter. So anyone who had been suspended from the shelter, like Benjamin Harvey was, would not be able to have a bed for them. The decision is also made in the morning about whether or not to keep it open. So, yeah, and they don't change it if it becomes colder. Who here thinks they could tell the difference between 32 <laughs> degrees and 31 degrees, 33 degrees and 32 degrees? Not me. I'd be just as dead. <laughs> yeah. Just as dead. Yo. Yeah, I have gloves on and my hands are going numb. Yeah, if I can add on the uh, the piece about the RVs getting kicked off. They got a trespassing charge, and it's not clear at all. In fact, it appears that the only person who complained was Bob Yates, city councilman, who's trying to make the police his own private security force against our homeless community. Because to actually enforce, for the police to actually enforce a trespassing charge, uh, they need to get a complaint from the property owner and it's not clear at all that that happened and so it's very possible that these guys are getting kicked out on false uh, a false claim with no standing such that legally they should still be there so at 8 a.m. in the morning they're supposed to leave and one of our city council members Jill Adler Grano is going to be staying there with one of our housing advisory board members Mason Moyer to be there in solidarity with them um, but it's quite possible that there could be legal action to defend those folks if, if we could get lawyers to do that. Thanks. Nice. Alright, so I guess the plan is uh, I'm going to go to the sidewalk and uh, speakers will speak and then we'll deliver the letter. Ideally, to Greg Harms himself. All right. I think well. Yeah. What's up? We well, we yeah. There's right. this dude is like looking at us. That's definitely him. <laughs> <laughs> it's all way <laughs> up in the top window. <laughs> is the offending <laughs> person? Yeah. At least watching us. Does he look like that? No. Office window. Uh, 